I'm Michal Larry Braun, osteopath and athletic therapist, and welcome to my ultimate low back pain program. Around the world, especially in the Western world, what people most suffer from is probably lower back pain. I can only speak for myself when I say that most people that come to visit me in clinic suffer from some form of lower back pain, whether it's local, diffuse, uh, whether it's sciatica symptoms, uh, lumbago, you name it. You can look it up on the internet, it's all out there. So that's what I treat people most for in clinic. So I'm one of those practitioners that's actually a lot happier the less I see my patients. My aim in my practice is to give my patients the tools and the homework so they can do things at home and become self-sufficient. And that's the aim of the Ultimate Low Back Pain Program. It's to give you the tools that will give you the know-how and ability to help yourself at home, to be pain-free, and to give you a better quality of life in terms of lower back pain. So, I'm sure you want to save money. Everybody does, even if you're rich. Having a program like this available to you, and it's a multidisciplinary program, will help you save money in the sense that you'll be able to do things at home by yourself and even if you're getting some other form of physiotherapy, osteopathy, chiropractic, acupuncture, shiatsu, what have you, it will help the practitioner because you'll be doing things at home to help yourself and to maintain what they're doing. And even if you're not going to a practitioner, you might try this program to see how it helps you and what it does for you in the long run. So being that I'm an osteopath, this program is mostly based on osteopathic principles. In osteopathy, one of the main principles is that we believe the body is a functional unit. That means that what happens in one place affects another place and it affects the whole body. It's impossible for you to have a migraine headache that won't affect your posture and your back, for example. Or it's impossible for you to break your finger and it won't affect your posture and the way you walk. Another example. In any case, what our aim is, it's to take the center of our body and to have it balance out with the periphery of our body, with our limbs, the spine and the limbs, for example. And as well, our aim is to balance the sides of our body, meaning our limbs, whether it's our arms and our legs, our hips, and to have that balance the center of our body our spine and our center of gravity. Now there's a lot of material covered here and a bunch of different things. So we're going to use the old KISS principle. Keep it simple. You don't have to use all the exercises all the time. I'm going to try and stress with each exercise and part of the program what it's meant to do and how it's meant to help you. But choose and choose carefully. See what works for you and see what you want to use when. The main thing is to do a little bit every day. When you do a little bit every day and you're consistent, you'll get quick results and sooner than later. Okay, so this is probably the most important exercise that you can do to free up your lower back. It affects the sacroiliac joints and you're going to see a picture here of the sacroiliac joints. It's basically where the hip bone and the lower back bone attach to each other. So what we want to do is the following. We prop ourselves up on our elbows so that we're in a half seated, very comfortable position. Then what we do is we do abduction, which is splitting the legs or lower extremities. Then we do dorsiflexion, which is pulling our toes back. And then we do in Internal rotation. We turn the legs towards each other, inward. It doesn't matter what order you set up the parameters in. As long as at the end, when you're going to do the exercise, you're in abduction, internal rotation, and dorsiflexion. Then, the exercise itself, we do for 60 seconds. All we do is, we lower our chin and our forehead as low as possible towards the sternum our chest bone and we hold it 
at maximum, maintaining the parameters in the lower extremities for about a minute. Breathing naturally, maintaining the parameters, and after a minute, we can relax. I recommend doing this exercise three to five times a day, especially if you're acute and you're in pain. What the exercise serves to do is to open up the sacroiliac joint and to realign the sacrum through the cranial sacral mechanism, which you can see over here. We basically use the paraspinal muscles in the back as well as the dura matter of the spinal cord to realign the spine. Again, we decoapt, decompact the sacrum, opening up the sacroiliac joint, and we use the spine and the occiput to realign the spine. So the sacrum is probably one of the most important bones in the body. It even comes from the word sacred, which is holy. A lot of cultures believe that it was holy because of its importance. Because it's literally our tailbone, but the actual tailbone, the cossacks, is attached to it. It's where all the nerves come out and they lead down to our lower extremities, our legs. And it contains the actual tail of the nerves, the cauda equina. In any case, the sacrum, as I mentioned, it's very important for it to be aligned. And usually, if you have a problem with the spine, it affects the sacrum. If you have a problem with the sacrum, it affects the spine. So that's why re realigning it is so important. One of my favorite exercises actually works to loosen and build suppleness into the sacrum. And it's so simple. All you do is lie on your back, bend your knees and your ankles to 90 degrees. You form your hands like this, basically into a triangle. And you put them in the small of your back, on the sacrum, and you'll see what the sacrum looks like over here in a diagram of the sacroiliac joint. And then all you do is slowly rock your knees from side to side. It's very subtle, and it's done quite slowly. And you just try to feel it. And you could slowly, if you want, lengthen the rocking from side to side, but you don't want to rock too much to the side because you want the sacrum to actually rock on the top of your hands. And this is a very, very good exercise to build suppleness and mobility into the sacrum. So, we have a group of muscles that are small and deep, and they're basically in the area of our buttock, coming from our lower back, and they attach to our hip. They are external hip rotators, and it's basically the piriformis muscle, along with another four muscles, and you'll see them in a picture right over here. So basically, these particular muscles can squeeze on your sciatic nerve and bring about sciatic dysfunction and sciatica. What happens is when our sacrum, as I mentioned before, and the sacroiliac joint is out of place, it causes problems in the biomechanics. And this causes our piriformis muscle to be tight, very tight on one side. So even if we're not suffering from sciatic, uh, dysfunction or sciatica, we could be experiencing lower back pain for that reason. So the next stretch, which I call the pretzel or the modified pretzel, is a way to stretch and loosen up those muscles, being the piriformis and the other four muscles that act with it to do external rotation of our uh, hip, the femur bone, and the leg as a result. So. I'm going to start with the modified pretzel stretch. Basically, I'm in a seated position. One leg is out in front of me. I want to bring the other leg over that leg 
meaning with my bent knee. These are the muscles that I'm going to be stretching. And I bring the knee as close as possible to my chest, and I really hug my knee close to my chest. I'm breathing. Again, I want to get a minimum of 30 seconds, natural breathing. And I'm just relaxing, relaxing. Stretches, no matter which side is problematic, you always do on both sides, also called bilateral. So after I stretch, and again, the more I can bring my actual foot closer to the other side of my body, the more of a stretch I'll get in the piriformis muscle and the whole group over there. The other side as well. My right leg is now straight in front of me. My left leg, and in my particular case, the left side seems to be more tight because it's a bit more of a problem for me bringing my leg over and into internal rotation of the thigh, so it seems to be tighter. And I just want to hug the knee as close as possible, breathe, and I maintain that stretch for 30 seconds. So this is the actual press stretch, which you can do if you're more limber and supple, and it's done in yoga all the time. In this particular case, I actually bring my right foot under my left butt, so I'm almost sitting, I actually am sitting with my left butt on the inside of my right ankle. My left leg, meanwhile, goes over, same way that it did before, bringing my knee closer to my body and having my foot flat on the floor. In this particular case, though, I also use my left arm to support me so that I'm in an erect seated position. And I take my right elbow, put it outside of my left knee, and I push. Then with my head, I look to the left, the opposite direction of where I'm stretching my knee. And I even with my eyes, engaging the fascia, the connective tissue that comes from my eyes, to help turn my head more to the left. This is also wonderful torsion to keep the spine supple and aligned. It's the same thing, I do it for 30 seconds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change position. Left foot on the right butt. Right knee goes over the left leg and knee. I support myself with my right arm for my upper body. I bring my left elbow to the outside of my right knee. I look to the right while I'm stretching my right knee, thigh, hip to the left. And I look with my eyes to the right. Breathing is maintained and relaxed. 30 seconds. And I'm done. This, besides for the exercise that we did at the beginning, where we disengaged and realigned the sacrum and sacroiliac joint with the occiput, this exercise is probably the second most important besides that one that you can do. The next thing we're going to deal with is the TFL and the ITB, the tensor fascia lata and the iliotibial band, which has attachments over here, and you'll see it in the picture, from the buttock muscles, from the gluteus that joins to the actual hip, and it extends all the way down to the ankle. These muscles often can cause sciatic symptoms or as a result of the muscles and our sacrum and lower back being misaligned, they can actually um, cause dysfunction of the iliotibial tract and the tensor fascia lata. So what we want to do is we want to stretch them and it's very easy. All we have to do is keep our back as loose as possible. Now I'm going to be crossing my legs. So the leg that is in back, which in this case right now is my right leg, is the one that I'm going to be stretching. My toes are actually touching each other. I keep my back, as I mentioned, as loose as possible. My chin in, and I want to hang down like a rag doll. And I want 
especially since I'm suffering from lower back pain, I don't want to make it worse. I keep my lower back muscles as loose as possible. Now I want to actually feel a stretching, burning sensation, which I'm going to be feeling pretty much from my lower back and buttock all the way down to the ankle of my right leg. And this particular stretch, again, I usually do it for a minute. After 30 seconds, I really start to feel the stretch. And I want to hang down and keep my lower back loose, breathe naturally, and really let those muscles stretch so that they can open up and loosen up. And whether it's the muscles or the muscles squeezing on the blood vessels or the nerves, I really want to loosen them up. And then I slowly get up, vertebra by vertebra. And again, I'm going to be actually switching now. And I want to, this time, stretch my left leg. My left leg is behind my right. My toes are touching each other. And the same thing. I slowly lower down, keeping my lower back nice and loose, hanging down like a rag doll, chin in to engage the fascia to help increase the stretch. And I slowly, slowly want to get that stretch. Again, a minimum of 30 seconds preferably a minute. The burning and pain from the stretching at this point is natural. Take it easy, breathe into it, breathe into the pain and let it out. And then slowly, after about a minute, coming up and relaxing. So the kidney and bladder are considered a functional unit. The kidney and the bladder, in terms of their placement in the body, are actually over here, where the beginning of the lower back is, meaning right underneath the ribs, and the bladder, inside the body, is actually where the sacrum is. This also corresponds to something called Ming Men Point in Chinese medicine, which has an association with the kidneys and bladder, which actually have meridians that are basically related to each other. So what we want to do is, we want to warm this area up and actually enhance it, make it supple, increase the energy and movement over there. So, simple way to do it, and it's a great thing to do, especially early in the morning or a few times a day. The first thing you want to do is actually warm up your hands. So basically, you want to rub them in a circular fashion. I would say if you do it about 36 times, 36 and any uh, multiple of the number 9 is a good thing in Chinese medicine. So you warm up the hands, and then basically put the hands right over here, where the ribs end, and you're going to take three breaths in and out, and you'll feel it becoming warm. After that, you want to make loose fists, like open fists, if you can see my hands over there. And how they're positioned, and you want to rub, not too hard, but definitely vigorously, and you want to get in there on the area. Also, you can do that for about 36 times, and this will help warm up the area and loosen the tissue in the surrounding area, especially the renal fascia, which is the tissue that surrounds the kidneys, and actually sits on top of this part over here, which is the ilia, or our hip bones. Then, for the next part, we actually do a sort of banging or tapping. Same thing, you can do it for about 36 times. And since, of course, as we mentioned, the kidneys and the bladder, or this whole part of the lower back are associated, we're going to do the same thing, but on the sacroiliac joint, right here. So the same thing. We want to warm up our hands, rub them briskly, vigorously, about 36 times. Put them right where the lower back and the hips join. So right over here, for about three breaths, in and out. Wait for it to become warm. Then the next step, which is vigorous rubbing.
and the last part, which is the tapping or banging. And remember, stay loose. Loose knees, loose ankles, and maintain proper posture, which is something you should be doing all the time. So this next exercise I call the meridian stretch. There's at least three different meridians which, according to Chinese medicine, pass through our lower back and in the area of our sacroiliac joint and even our buttock in the area of where we might be experiencing sciatic symptoms. So this next exercise is meant to actually stretch and work those meridians and to help relieve pain and symptoms that you're feeling in that area. So basically, I stand with my legs, my feet, about hip distance apart. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to push the sky, actually hold up the sky, and push the earth. But I'm actually going to turn right. So in this case, my left hand is up, my right hand is down, both extended, so that my wrist is back and my upper body is turned 90 degrees relative to my lower body and with my eyes now I'm going to look down even though my head is straight I'm going to look down towards my right hand and fingers which are pushing down on the right side of my body and I hold that for about 30 seconds so in this particular case I'm stretching my whole left side and the associated meridians and I'm breathing naturally and then I slowly switch to the other side turning left right hand goes up left hand goes down upper body perpendicular 90 degrees relative to the lower body knees are loose holding up the sky pushing the earth down and I slowly with my eyes even though my head is straight look down towards my left hand in this particular case and now I'm stretching everything out on the right side from the tips of my fingers all the way down to the ankle and then I slowly come back and I relax and you can do that a couple of times as well minimum of 30 seconds each side and this is what I give for most uh, types of lower back pain to my patients. It addresses basically the paraspinal muscles, the muscles that are along the spine on both sides. There's a few groups of muscles that actually serve to move the spine, especially to help keep it erect and to help extend it. Okay, so what are we going to do and how are we going to do it? Very simple. Each part of the program of this particular part of the program, meaning the exercise, you keep for 30 seconds. We start by lying completely flat. It's important to note that in the first part, you do not use your head, neck, and upper back. You only use the lower part of your body. You're going to bring your knee as close as possible in to your chest. The other foot is basically loose and extended, the other leg. And for 30 seconds, you're going to hold the knee as close as possible to the chest. Do not pulse, do not vibrate, do not rock back and forth. All you're doing is a static stretch. All static stretches should be done for a minimum of 30 seconds. This way, we can allow the mechanisms within the muscle and the tendon, which are called the Golgi tendon apparatus, as well as the muscle spindle, we can allow them to relax and allow the muscle to stretch properly. For the second part, after 30 seconds, we basically use our abdominal muscles and we bring our head as close as possible to the knee. You don't want to stretch your neck and your cervical spine unnecessarily. You're basically engaging the upper part of the back through the abdominal muscles and getting as close as possible to the knee with your chin and your nose and this engages the upper part of the back. The first part stretches the lower part of the back up to the middle, the second part the upper part of the back to the middle of the back.
and then you relax. So that should have been about a minute. Then we go to the other side. Knee into the chest. Let's say we've done it for about 30 seconds, also holding it at maximum. And then we come up using our abdominal muscles, again watching the neck, and we bring our chin and our nose as close as possible to the knee, utilizing our abdominal muscles. And this way we're getting a nice stretch, this time in the left side of our back, on the paraspinals. Relax. And of course, as we mentioned, we're working both the periphery and the center. So now what we do is we bring both knees into the chest. And in both parts of the exercise, you can either keep your hands here under the knee or on top. Again, for 30 seconds. Get a nice stretch in the lower back. Do not use your head and upper back in the first part of the program. And nice and relaxed. Using the abdominal muscles, bring the chin, the nose, as close as possible for the next 30 seconds up to the knee. In yoga as well, this exercise is used to actually massage the ascending, descending, and transverse colons. And then you can just relax either with your knees bent or back in the starting position. So we're not here to discuss philosophy. So basically I don't care if you believe in homeopathy or not, but homeopathy is going to be what we're going to be talking about briefly. I'm going to share with you the remedies that have helped me for these particular issues through the years. Mainly pain, and even more mainly, lower back pain. In terms of homeopathy, one of my favorite ready remedies, meaning that's put out by a company, is actually from the Heal Company in Switzerland, plug plug, and it's a homeopathic remedy called Traumil. Whether you're using the cream or the pills, I highly recommend it. Very good for all sorts of pain, especially lower back pain. In terms of homeopathic combinations, the best combination that I personally recommend is a combination of Arnica, Rustox, and Rutagrav. You could combine the remedies or take them each individually, but if you take them together, you'll probably get the best and quickest relief and results. So I'm going to just tell you briefly about each of the remedies. Arnica. Arnica is your homeopathic first aid remedy. It's used in trauma, and it's the first remedy for injuries, bruises, etc., and also for muscular strain and fatigue. All sorts of trauma is treated with Arnica. Falls, sprains, blows, wounds, fractures, soft tissue injury. It reduces and prevents pain, bleeding, bruising, and swelling. And it prevents secondary infection, and it accelerates heating. The next remedy in the combination is Rustox, which I mentioned. Rus is used for acute sprains, chronic arthritis, neuralgia, restlessness, and stiffness. And it's one of the most important joint remedies. So it affects all the joints in a good way. It deals with connective and fibrous tissue, especially ligaments. And Rus may be useful and effective for literally any joint in the body. The third partner in this particular combination, Ruta, otherwise known as Rutagrav, is used for joints, tendons, or cartilage injuries. It helps damage or weakness, bruises, pains, aching, and soreness. It affects tendons, cartilage, periosteum, bone, and the sites of tendon insertion. Basically, when you take this particular 
group of remedies together, the dosage it should be taken at is anywhere between 6 to 15 CH. That's what I recommend. Anything higher than that, you're getting into constitutional remedies and things that are more in the realm of classical homeopathy, which is not what we're trying to do over here. We're basically dealing with a symptomatic remedy over here that will deal with the pain and with the different uh, problems that you're dealing with in terms of what's causing you to have lower back pain or other sorts of symptoms in the area, including sciatica, stiffness, radiation to your lower extremities, etc. So let's take a couple of moments now to discuss a couple of amazing supplements, MSM and Celadrin. MSM is methyl sulfonyl methane. Again, look it up on the internet. Basically, it's a sulfur-based supplement that's present in a lot of the foods that we eat, especially fruits and vegetables, but not in the sort of concentration that it's available in, in pill form. Since it's a sulfur-based supplement, it's actually a collagen builder. And we know that collagen fibers in our body are present in ligaments, tendons, cartilage, the discs in our back. And as well, we also have collagen in our hair, nails, and teeth. So it's an amazing supplement in terms of helping rebuild and recycling the collagen in our body. What I would tell you is, if you're taking MSM, again, it's just my personal recommendation, ask your pharmacist or doctor, take a thousand milligrams three times a day if you're in pain. For maintenance, a thousand milligrams a day is sufficient. The other supplement is Celadrin. Celadrin actually works on the cell membrane, the, the membrane of our cells. So, Celadrin itself is made up of fatty acid esters, which cause the cell membrane to be more, uh, I guess you can say it affects uh, the lubrication of the cell membrane and if there's any inflammation it helps to reduce it. Again in terms of the actual mechanisms of how and why you could look that up yourself. What I would tell you is that if you keep kosher be aware Celadrin is not kosher. It comes from animal based sources and if you need to take it and you keep kosher ask your local rabbi to see what's entailed. So basically, there's a lot of supplements out there. What I'm giving you is my personal best. And in combination, they work. So try it. So there's many resources out there. Do the research. Help yourself. Please, I want to hear from you. Make sure to send me feedback. And I look forward to hearing good news. So, remember my motto. Stop kvetching, start living. I'm Michael Larry Braun, osteopath and athletic therapist. Thanks for viewing my program.